Okay, today we have Brian Blankenship here with us in the wood shop, and he is going to be conducting a stretcher making workshop, and this is from wood that has been purchased from Home Depot. Home Depot, yeah. Um, the wood we have here is Claymark uh, Premium Pine. When you go and buy your lumber at Home Depot to build your stretchers, first of all, it's a good, uh, a good idea to buy the best lumber you can get. You may want to use poplar, aspen, um, but today we're using just uh, premium pine. If you'll notice, there are no knots in it. Uh, you don't want knots in any frames that you're building or stretcher frames. So the first thing you're going to do when you pull the, the lumber off of the rack is you're going to pull it out and look down the edges of it, both this side and this side here on the top, and try to find the straightest lumber you can find in the bin. Um, crooked lumber is really difficult to, to deal with, so when I get the, the straightest stuff you can find. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, um, Beth has decided that this stretcher, we want, or, or we're going to make it two inches deep off of the wall. So the first thing we're going to do, this is a one by four board. Uh, when you buy your lumber, the actual size of this is three quarter by three and a half. When we, when we buy a one by four, and that'll be the same with all lumber. Say for instance, you buy a one by two, um, it'll be three quarter inch by one and a half inch. So keep that in mind when you're buying the lumber, it won't be the exact one by four inches. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this board and we're gonna rip it down to two inches wide. So at, that, at this point, I'll set the saw. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the fence right here at two inches mark here. And then we're gonna set the depth of the saw. We're gonna lay the board here beside it. We're gonna drop the, the saw blade down to about the teeth are about a quarter, maybe a quarter of an inch above the, the wood. So now we're gonna lock the, the fence down and our settings are, are ready for us. Before we saw this, the one thing that we wanna do is we've looked at the lumber and made sure that it's straight when we bought it at the, at the store. Now we wanna look down because all lumber is gonna have a little bit of a curve to it. You're very rarely ever gonna find it really, really super straight. So we're gonna look down the edge and we're gonna find, there's, there's one side is gonna be the concave and one side's gonna be the convex. So we always wanna run the convex side against the fence side. So I'm gonna flip it over where our convex side is next to the fence. That way it allows it to travel along the fence and keep our cut as straight as we can possibly keep it. The paddle right here, uh, you wanna make sure that this switch is on. This is what turns the power to the saw on. You should, be, you should get a solid green light, um, and that tells us that the, the stop device in the saw is, is ready, and we can pull the paddle out and turn the power on. I'm gonna get a push stick here, put it beside. And we're gonna run this out. So now we have our two inch board that is ready to, to do the um, bevel cut in it, which will give us our 45 degree angle that creates the, the ledge for your canvas to ride on. Um, okay. Also talk about um, um, how you hold the wood up against the fence and okay. run it between your fingers. Yeah. What Beth is talking about here is when I put the, the wood here, I'm gonna push in with my left hand, my middle finger, I'm pushing in against the fence, and then as I ride the wood through, I push down and in. So you can use either your index finger and your thumb, or your middle finger and thumb, whatever's most comfortable for you. And, and when you do that, you wanna push with a substantial amount of pressure, but not so much that the wood can't travel. So you're gonna push that in, and then you're gonna let it slide through your fingers. You wanna be careful not to touch the very edge because you can get splinters that way. As long as you keep your thumb and your other finger out here on these pieces, you, won't get, you shouldn't get splinters. So then you're gonna, that holds it against the fence. 
and it also keeps it flat on the table so that it'll ride through and give you. So now we're going to set the saw to cut the, the bevel. So I'm going to go down here and loosen this knob in the center. And then I'm going to crank this all the way over. And if you can look here, you can see the blade is starting to move over toward me. And we're going to go to a 45 degree angle. When it stops, you're right at a 45. And then you tighten that center knob down and the, and the blade is set. So for a two inch board, this is where you'll have to figure out your measurements depending on how deep you're cutting your um, stretcher frame. So over here in my notes, I have for a two inch board or a two inch deep canvas, I'm gonna set the saw fence at one and three eighths. So I'm going to move this down to one and three eighths. I think that's it right there. So now, because I've I've turned the saw on its side, it's it's further down into the table. So I'm going to have to raise that a little bit. So it'll cut all the way through the wood. So. Tighten that back down. When I cut the bevel, again, I'm going to get my convex side. I've looked down the board, found my convex side always against the fence. I've set my saw now at the bevel that I want. We're at one and three eighths. I'm going to turn the saw on now. Got it set. Now you can see right here, this is the actual spacing that we need. So. So at there's one and three eighths. So that there's a little lip, right? A little yeah. edge to it. A little bit where, of an edge. This so is, that it's not super fragile. So if it's just a one thin little piece of wood, it would yeah, get easily damaged. Yeah. yeah. Damaged. So now we'll go ahead and cut this board all the way through with the bevel. And now, as you can see, we have our, our beveled board that is ready for the next step. With that. Okay. okay. Okay, for the next part of the, the stretcher um, assembly, we've got our two pieces where we cut the bevel on the, the two inch wide or deep board. And then we have a, I don't remember what the measurement was on. But we have a one and a quarter inch board that'll be what I call, I don't know anyone else, but what I call on these is a stabilizer board. So we cross the grains here, which gives the, the, the stretcher a lot more stab or stabilization. So you can see on the table here, we have a, a board that's permanently mounted here. You can, if you come in, you can use this. Uh, there's one on that table, there's one on this table and a table over there. So um, what that does is that spaces, automatically spaces this. So when I glue this together here, when I flip this over, you can see it gives us a space in, on the back. So if you want to roll your canvas around and, and tack it in, it gives you a little bit of space so this is not laying flat against the wall. So I have my beveled piece here. I'll set it here. I've got the stabilizer. I'll lay it up on its edge here, get the wood glue. And I put one bead of glue down the edge of this board. And then I'm going to lay that over on its side next to that piece with the spacer board underneath it. Line that up. And then I'm going to take the, the brad nailer here with 18 gauge uh, brads that are one and a half inches long. Line that up and I'm going to come in on this side right here holding that in place and shoot the one first nail in. And what I do is I use the end of this board instead of going down this because these tables are not are real are not real flat. So what I do is I use this end of this that always get the sa exact same 
uh, spacing on that. So I hold that down and I'll bring the next one in, shoot it, do this about every 12 inches. Because what the, the brad nails are really doing is they are just holding the pieces of wood together while the glue dries, because the glue is actually what really holds the, the stretcher together. And so we've got that done. And what, what we end up with is one of, a piece like this. This one has already been cut to 25 inches uh, with the miters, which are what we'll do next on the, the chop saw. And we have another one here that's 42. So this is a 25 by 42 inch stretcher. And so we're going to let that sit aside and dry for a couple hours before we use it. Okay, now Brian is going to cut the miter cuts for the stretcher bar that he's going to put together in a minute. To make the canvas, yeah. Okay, we have the miter saw here. If you haven't used it before, you've probably been through the training with me. Uh, just a refresher, right here on the top we have a little switch. Um, turns on a LED light right here above the blade, so when we pull it down, it'll show us exactly where our blade's going to cut on the wood. Um, this is our lockdown for the, the, the pivot on the miter. So we have a little uh, break right here where you have to push down before you can move this. So we can go all the way over to 45 degree right here. It'll drop in that slot. And then this is the lockdown for that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting in this direction for all of these miters. Um, we do have the ability to come back and cut this direction too if we want to. But I like to cut all of my cuts on this one side because I'm, first of all, I'm right-handed and it feels better that way to me. Just, and, but for you, it might be if you're left-handed to go on the other side and cut, you can do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do, we've got our board here um, that we're gonna cut our two pieces out of. One of them is 42 inches and one is 25. So this uh, six foot board, there's enough length there to cut both of those pieces. So. Um, what, what we've used for this one stretcher, this 25 by 42 stretcher, are two one by four boards is all we've needed uh, to make that. So first thing I'll do is I'll take the, the right end of that board and I'm gonna cut my first 45 degree angle on here. So I'm gonna put this up here. Again, I can pull the saw blade down. I don't know if you can see that there. And you can see exactly where the, the saw is gonna cut on that wood. I'm gonna line that up because we want to, to reserve as much of the, the lumber as we can so we don't want to cut too far down on the piece of wood, but we want to go in far enough that we get a good um, miter on it. So what you want to do is bring the, the saw to a full throttle and then start cutting. And you want to cut very slow. Even if the blade on this is really sharp, it can splinter the wood. So the slower you go, the better cut you get. So we're going to start the saw and then make the cut through. So after we make that cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this on top of its edge, flip it around, because you always want, you always want your um, miters to come toward you. If your miters are going this way, they're never going to fit together into a, a, a rectangle or a square. So one way I always think about this is to think, when I lay this down here, think of myself as the vanishing point, and you would look out like this, so you'd make a V. And so your miter would come this way. So this time we're going to cut the miter in this direction. So we're going to take the tape measure. Since this is the outside of the canvas stretcher, we're going to measure 42 inches in for the first cut. So I'm going to make a little mark here at 42 inches. And I always try to keep a little piece of uh, wood that's cut at a 45 here with me and I'll line that up with that mark. So I'll have a, a mark because it's kind of hard if, if you're not used to doing this to, to make that miter on that mark just right. But if you have a line here that you can line up the, the saw blade with, it makes it much easier. So now I'm going to just put this in here and I'm going to pull my blade down so I can see that shadow and I can see that the blade's gonna cut right there on that line. 
Again, get the saw to full throttle and a slow cut. And so here we have our first uh, 42 inch piece. And what I do when I'm making these, sometimes I'm making a bunch of different, or maybe even the same size stretchers. So you might end up with four or eight or, you know, whatever of these. So if you have a whole bunch of them, you can get confused, especially if the sizes are close. So I'll just make a little 42 right there. So I'll know exactly what size. So I've got my 42 inch. Um, and Brian, you might want to emphasize that you're pushing against the fence. Yes. So to um, level this wood, to make sure you're getting yeah. up. You want to make sure, always make sure that it's, uh, that it's flush against the fence. And that's the fence of the saw. Don't push it against these pieces of wood out here because they may not be um, plumbed exactly to the, we know the fence is perfectly plumb on this saw. So always push against this fence that's right here, the metal fence. So again, for my 25 inch piece, as you can see now, this miter is cut in the wrong direction for the, this to be the outside. So I'm gonna have to come back and cut that miter again right there. So I'm gonna put that up, line it up. So now I have this same piece again that I'm gonna flip over and then I'm going to mark it at 25 inches. One thing you can do, if you're making a whole bunch of these, then you can just use this one as a template for the next one. So what I'll do is I'll take the bottom of this one, put it next to the bottom of this one. You just wanna make sure that it's flush on the end and flush up here on the top. And then I can just uh, make the mark off of that one. And that, secure or ensures that that's going to be exactly the same as the 25 inch piece that I've already cut. So then I can just put this on here, line up the saw blade with the line. And so now I have my other 25 inch piece. Now we would make four of these um, for that stretcher, not 425, but 225, 242. I've already made two of them ahead of time. So now we have all, all four of those. And so those are ready to be assembled now we'll, when we go back to the table over there. Okay, so now we're at the part of building the stretcher where it's all gonna be put together. And Brian's gonna start by making sure that he has a long and a short side in the same position every time because that's a common mistake people make when building something. So I'm gonna lay the, the 42 inch piece right here, my 25 inch piece with the bevel up. So I'll put that miter together right there what we're gonna do is drop some glue in on this. What we wanna do is, we don't want too much glue, just enough to, to cover that good. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Always glue, but put glue on both sides. Again, not too much, but not too little either. So you, you know, it's the Goldilocks thing. And Beth has given me a, a nice wet piece of paper towel here because at this point you want to be, this is not as critical about the glue as it would be with the frames because you're going to cover this with canvas. So um, a little bit of glue seepage on the joints is not necessarily too bad a thing, but it's good practice to, to learn to keep a nice clean surface. So now in the... Um, Brad nailer, I have it one and a half inch Brad 18 gauge Brad nails. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this joint together. Again, with my left hand because I'm right handed. And I'm going to shoot straight in right here, one Brad on top and one on bottom. Then I'll turn that a little bit and I'm going to do the same thing on this here 
As you can see, if you look down in here, you can see the beading of the glue where it came out. Um, just take that wet cloth and wipe that out. And what, I'm gonna, what, what I would do is set this aside and let that joint dry for an hour or two. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to take my other 42 inch piece, my 25. Again, like Beth said a while ago, we want to do exactly what we did because if I were to build it from this side, we'd have two pieces that wouldn't fit together as, as a frame. Um, so I'm gonna glue. So now we end up with two pieces just exactly alike. We're gonna set these up our side right now to let those dry for a little bit. After these have, have dried for a couple hours, we're going to lay this one down with the, again, I do it with the long sides toward, or facing toward me. And I'll set them there just to, just to make sure, because this at this point, if you put them and they're not lining up at all, you know you've done something really bad wrong. So now I'll just take and glue, put the glue on this end. Both surfaces again. And one thing you might want to remind people of is that they don't have to rush because the glue can be a little tacky. It doesn't have to be fresh. So um, take your time. Yeah. Move In fact, glue. it's better with wood glue to let it, they say, I've heard 15, 20 minutes. Um, that might be a little long, I think, but you can kind of feel it and feel when it starts to get tacky and um, it will. So I've done the glue on those two corners. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this before I nail it around. As Beth said, no need to be in a big rush. And then I'm going to do the, the glue on both of these pieces because what happens is if you just do one and, and nail it together, when you go to do that other corner, the, the other corner to that, what you do is you torque those apart and it can break that um, joint where you've already just glued. So it's best to do this all at the same time. And that glue, and so now, we're ready to nail this corner together. So I'll line it up first. Then I'll turn it. And so now we have the frame almost completed. Um, the only thing we have left to do are to put our corner blocks in and a, cross and a, and a, cross, a center crossbar. Okay, for the crossbar, I've got a, a piece of wood here that I think is one and a half inches. Um, it doesn't have to be the same width here, just so, um, you know, probably wouldn't want to go any less than an inch. Uh, to stabilize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my frame and I'm going to flip it upside down. And you always want to be careful with a stretcher frame when you're laying it on its face because it's very delicate. So I'm going to lay it down really easy. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center point where I want to put this, the, the bar at. So I'll measure 42 from the left side, 42, half of 42 is 21. I think that's my math is correct. So I'll make a mark here at 21. Always measuring from the same end. I wouldn't come up here and measure this way because if it's off just a little bit, it 
could make the bar a little bit crooked. Make my mark at 21 there. So now I know that the center of that board will go there. So what, I'm what I'll do is I'll, instead of measuring, because I'll usually use the frame to measure this, you never want to measure in the center because if it bows a little bit, you're going to get the wrong measurement. So I'm going to come down here to the end where I know it's supposed to be, or where it's correct, and I'm going to take a, just a piece of wood here. I'm going to lay it down square against the table. And what this is going to do is that's going to allow me to make that mark showing me that where to cut that. And I'm going to make a little mark like this so I know which side to cut on when I take it to the saw because if I cut to the wrong side it's going to shorten it. So I'm going to cut with this where this mark is on that side of the wood. So now we're at the miter saw and I have my, my mark where I'm going to cut that, um, cut to the right of the mark. Okay, so I've, I've cut my my um, stabilizing bar, and it, when I put it down here, I notice that it's a, just a little bit long. I always try to cut these a little bit, or as they say in woodworking, cut it heavy. So I don't want to force this in there, because what it'll do is it'll bow the, the frame out. But at this point, I know that it's just a hair, just a hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to run back over to the miter saw. There's a lot of trips back and forth, and cut off just a hair. And when I cut that, I didn't even cut the width of the saw blade. So I can put it in there. And now you can see that it just fits in there just right. There's very little space. So that's what we want it to do. So what I've done is I have some lue on here, or you can get quarter inch plywood, whatever. You probably don't want to go anything thicker than a, than a quarter inch. And, and we've made these corner blocks that will, act, not only do they stabilize the frame, but they also square it. So when you make these on the, on the miter saw, you want to be sure that you get them good and square. Because if they're not square, your frame's not going to be square. So as I said, we've cut those out of Luon. Um, what I'll do is I'll use, actually on this frame, I'll use six of these, because I'm going to use two of them to put in the, the center bar. So the first thing I'm going to do as I build up right here, I, I build up with some, some extras or you can just get some scrap lumber to the point where I'm actually even going to use my little pad here. Whatever works to get that level with that frame, put that center mark right there, put glue in this direction like a T across the there. And what I'll do is I'll lay that down right there and put that on there. I'm going to change back to the 5 8 inch brads because if I use the long brads, it'll shoot through the front of the frame and then you've got a mess. You've got to cut those off and then, so the first thing I'll do is I'll put one right there, one there, one there, and then flip it around. And you can pull that till that's good and center. And, it, and now you can see we've got our, what do you call that, a support bar? Oh. But I don't know if we use the same terminology. Cross bar, we call cross it cross bar. bar, yeah. yeah. Whatever you want to call it, stabilizer. Yeah. Typically, so, when you see those in magazines, though, or if you're looking to buy your stuff online, your stretchers, they're called crossbars. Yeah. Okay. So the final thing to do with this is we're going to put in our four um, corner blocks. And you, you can do this in whatever order. Um, Beth mentioned a while ago that it's probably, it would probably be better to do the corner blocks first, especially if you're putting in um, a number of crossbars. Uh, with one, it's probably not critical, but if you were putting, you know, a couple this because if it's a really big stretcher frame, you're going to have, you know, 
a web of, of crossbars, so you're gonna need to put the, the corner blocks on first to get that squared before you put those in. This one, it's not that critical. But. So now we're gonna put the last four, the four corner blocks on. Um, as opposed to the center ones, now I'm going to put the glue on the outside here like this. And what I usually do with all four of them is I'll, I'll just go ahead and, while I've got the glue in hand, and it, I'll just go ahead and put the glue on all four, drop them in. And I'm still using the 5 8 inch nail, brad nail. I'll secure three nails on that one side and make sure I pull this so it squares that corner. I didn't have to pull any of it because it's already pretty square. Um, sometimes, sometimes you'll find you might have to torque it just a little bit to pull it into square, but that will not only stabilize the, the frame, it'll square it up. And there you have your completed stretcher frame, Beautiful. with the exception of a little bit of sanding, finish work. Um, sometimes you want to come in and sand these edges lightly just to take the sharpness off of them. I think Beth has had problems with it cutting the canvas. No, not cutting the canvas, but making it hard to pull the canvas hard to pull over, it, over it. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what we do is sand those and round those edges down a little bit, and then it's easier to stretch the canvas. Yeah. Okay, great.